thinking, you know, paint is just like a cosmetic thing. Like it's not. And I'm gonna explain this next statement, but paint holds your house together. It's me, Azalea. You're watching my YouTube channel, Way Crunchy. Who are you? I'm Thomas. And how are you? <laughs> hey, Thomas, my son. Okay, so we're at the Fixer Opera today. I'm so excited for a full work week here. And guess what? VDOT, Virginia Department of Transportation, is trimming all the trees like along this road, along our yard. And they're terrible at it. <sighs> they're fine. They cut like children. They're fine. But they're loud. They're very loud. And I'm obviously trying to film a YouTube video, hey. and so it's just not very good. Hey, be quiet. You might hear them in the background. Okay. That then. rumbling? Yes, that's the motor. Yes, you hear a motor hum, they're just anyway, checking all our plants. So last night, I dug out a row around the front like patio and walkway to get my perennials and bulbs in the ground, as I have always planned to do. I made a whole video about packaging up my bulbs and perennials at the old house. It's this one. It's on the This Old Shack playlist on YouTube, and it's also in my gardening playlist, because it's both, shack, business, and garden. So anyway, I packed up all my bulbs and perennials, and I need to get them in the ground before it freezes. Now, we're in October here in Virginia. We're stones throw away, so the time is now. I need to get my plants in the ground. Now, I wanted to clear out this whole big garden area, and it was overwhelming, and so I kept getting nothing done. So, I just decided, girl, you can dig up one row and get your stuff in the ground. You can move stuff around next year. You can expand over the winter, but you need to get some stuff in the ground so they can wake up in the spring. And make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Something alive. Something new. Holy, whoa, it's a skink. Holy cow, it's a skink. Watch out, take a bite. <laughs> oh my God, it's a skink. Oh my God, you've had a skink. <laughs> oh my God, you've had a blue-tailed skink. What a bite. <laughs> Uh, do they bite? No, I mean, maybe, but it's maybe. not poisoned. I mean, he bit me a little bit, but it's not poisoned. <coughs> Pick him up by a tail. No, his tail will fall off, and I'm not mean. Oh, my God. You've had a blue tailed skin. See wow. what I called you? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my. This is incredible. I mean, we have skinks hiding in the dirt here? Yep. Here, I'll hold him with the show. Oh. 
shovel. Yep. No, the shovel might hurt him. No, I just set him on the shovel. Set him. Oh. Blue tail skink. So, I, li I don't like you with the shovel. It's too scary for a skink. Oh, he's growing. Yeah, he was buried. Because it's getting cold outside. He'd be a lot... So, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? He'd be a lot faster if it was hot summertime. Oh, my God. Oh All right. Oh, God, we have a skink. What do we do? Tom, come over here with Mama. We found a skink. So this is a blue tail skink, <gasps> and I'm able to catch him and hold him because it's cold today. If it was hot, there ain't no catching him. Uh, Tom, come here. Okay. What? No, don't do that. Why are but, you scared? Oh, fine, just for the viewers, but you're gonna have to pay me. I'm not paying you. This is beautiful, and one, don't be scared. <laughs> Why are you scared, Tom? Don't grab okay. him by the tail. They'll drop their tails, and then they'll be at a disadvantage in the wild. All right, we're letting him go away. Bye-bye, Skink. I'm gonna follow him. Follow him, observe him. y'all the road crew has finally left the scene so i can talk to y'all about what i'm doing here you can still hear the rooster crowing but that's all part of it here on this old shack um so i have been planting perennial daisies in this row around here so yesterday i took a bucket and a big old shovel and i took you know the top layer of grass off into the bucket and went and dumped it in the back field so today I'm just taking out little roots, little bits of grass. I'm just doing this edge here. Um, and I started these daisies from seed this year at the barn. They're perennials, but the first year they don't do much. So next year they should be blooming, which is great because we got this beautiful new house for them to bloom at and enchant. <sighs> God, I love flowers. Gardening is, I don't just garden. I am a gardener. I love it. I'm enthusiastic about plants and nature. I'm a naturalist. Um, anyway, so I know right much about gardening and you can see those videos if you check it out on the channel. Anyway, I got to get started here because it's my passion. So I got these old, I got a variety of perennials here and bulbs. I'm going to go back and put the bulbs in in between, but I'm going to get all these daisies in. I'm going to put snapdragons down yonder. I got a carnation I'm going to put next to the snapdragons and a little echinacea I'm going to put next to the carnation. And then I got all these daisies. I'm going to put some bulbs. I got tulips, daffodils, and crocus I'm going to put in around here. So this daisy needs to go right here. So let me show you what I've been doing. So I dig in. Now this used to be grass. Anywhere you're staking out as your first year garden bed, you need to get all these grass roots out, these wild onion roots out. You need to kind of, if you can, go through it like with detail and, you know, get the roots out. And sometimes tree roots will be growing through. I snip the tree roots. At the moment, I'm throwing all the waste over there. The rest of that is going to be garden eventually. Um, so, I don't need to keep that neat and tidy or anything. So, I'm digging on through here. Now, there is... A little bit of topsoil here which is good we're in virginia and so it's mostly hard red really red clay like make yourself a pot clay so um i can't imagine living somewhere without that clay earth and you know red plowed fields because i never have but i hear <laughs> it's not everywhere in the world uh so Anyway, I'm be digging up here. Now, I 
also, I'm, there's a little bit of topsoil is my point, and that's where you're gonna get some nutrients. The clay is not where you wanna plant stuff. Um, so, got a little bit of topsoil here, which is great. You know, this, that's not red clay. There's a little red clay mixed in, but not that much. Um, but down, a few inches down, it's straight red clay. So I'm thankful for a little bit of topsoil. Now, I have brought compost with me from the barn. Now, this is compost. I've been composting myself, you know. It's rabbit droppings, yard clippings, kitchen scraps, newspaper, that kind of stuff. Let's take a look. So, this isn't 100% finished compost, but it's going to add a lot of nutrients to this soil. Oh, this is going to be good. So, I'm saving all the little scraps of garbage and old nails and screws that I find in here. And we'll take a look at those. Here's a little piece of garbage. So, I'll make a little pile of the garbage. I'm putting the garbage over on the sidewalk. Grass and roots over in there. And little rocks I find. Let's see. I found right many little rocks. What I'm doing with the little rocks is putting them along this other edge of this like little remnant here of a landscape border. So it's kind of come away from the sidewalk a little bit. So I'm filling that in with the little rocks I find. Anyway, gardening is just a lovely meditative process and it's good for the spirit. Yeah, oh, we there's right much mica in this soil as well. You know, mica is that fool's gold, that glittery rock. It's soft. It's a soft stone. You can crumble it with your hands. And so it's mixed all in here with the clay and the topsoil, just a little sparkle. That's some Virginia magic here. I found right many little coins. And I'll wash those off and see what year they are. The house was built in 1929, so they might be old. Or they could be from last year. There's some soft mica. So here's this soft mica. Can you see the glitter to it? It's a stone, but you could break it. I hate to break it because it ain't reversible. You know, once a stone breaks, it never builds back up. For the sake of telling y'all, about this. They'll put it in cosmetics. I hear in other countries there's terrible abusive mica mines and so you don't want to buy cosmetics with mica in it because they're exploiting people to dig it up out of these dangerous mines. So yeah, but I got beautiful mica right here in my soul. Oh yeah, my hands are glittering. Can you see it? So anyway, I'm gonna get the rest of these plants in. All right, I've reached the stopping point. We gonna need to go eat lunch, but I got all my bulbs in. I got all my daisies in. I still gotta dig out this little corner over here with where I'm gonna put the carnation and snapdragons, but we gonna have to take a break. Rome was not built in a day. Rome was not built in a day. Good morning, y'all. It is a chilly morning here at the Fixer Upper. Uh, it's only gonna get colder. So this is the time period of cold house fixing. I've got my son's little vest on. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna jump in and try and get a little painting done today. I got a doctor's appointment later, so I'm just gonna hop in and try and get a little something done.
go ahead and unscrew the funeral service thermometer, which I'm definitely putting back up. But while I'm, this is my primer, and then I'm going to put on my paint, and then I'm going to put my thermometer back up. pretty tight. Did not get the dang thing unscrewed. I just moved it around and I guess I'll go through the same dance when I get to painting. I don't feel like trying to unscrew it. This turned out to be the path of least resistance. Let me get that screw and put it back in. I really kind of like it with the old rugged thermometer and the clean white. I was pulling down an abandoned wasp nest. Definitely not abandoned. Good thing it's cold today or I would have just got stung. They move slow when it's cold. Oh my God, y'all. Oh my God, is it a wasp in it? Yeah. Mama just grabbed wasps with her bare hands. Whoa, you're frisky. I'm... It was an accident, and it was not smart. Oh, geez, that's a killer wasp. Well, it's not a killer, but it would hurt me. Show me that.
with y'all. So I'm going to talk to y'all for a quick second about paint. And thinking, you know, paint is just like a cosmetic thing, like it's not. And I'm going to explain this next statement, but paint holds your house together. Okay, so like this porch. This porch is made of wood. Wood is, you know, at all times trying to break back down, go back to the earth. Every time moisture gets on the wood, it's accelerating decomposition. Mold, mildew, moss, um, weather. You know, your house is at all times trying to go back to the earth and decompose. And paint keeps the moisture out keeps the mold, the mildew, the moss out of the wood. So if your wood is rotting, your house is falling down and the paint protects the wood. So you paint your house to keep your house standing, you know? So paint is more than just a color. And so, yeah, you know, once you buy a house, you know, it's not done. You gotta keep the elements from breaking your house back down, you know? You gotta keep her painted. You gotta keep her swept. <sighs> and I'm just so happy to have this lovely house here to keep up. But yeah, getting that paint on her is important. what we got going on here is there's a gate with a latch and it's a pallet and I'm not painting it. So that thing's ugly. That's gonna go. I'm gonna unscrew it or John's gonna unscrew it. Someone's gonna unscrew it when we get our contractor in here fixing the hole in the porch. So this gate is stopping people from just running up the stairs into the hole. This gate also, you know, we don't live here yet. This gate is a little bit of security to keep people off the porch, you know? So this gate is gonna go. So y'all can just imagine that. The gate is going to be gone. 